tonight on the night team. Police investigating after a shooting at the Shively Animal Clinic. What investigators say led up to the shooting. And then. It's so hard to hear these shootings and innocent people being hurt. An overnight shooting leaves residents and business owners crying for help. Tonight on the night team, they share their concerns. Plus. It literally doubles your tax rate instantly. In the business of marijuana, our focus team investigates how those looking to get into the hemp industry may struggle to turn a profit. The WHAS 11 night team starts now. We're following developing news here on the night team. Thank you for joining us. I'm Bobby McSwine. A man is dead after a shooting in the Shively Animal Clinic. Shively police say the shooting happened at about 630 this evening. When officers arrived, they found a man who had been shot. He was transported to the hospital where he later died. Police say they were originally called on the scene because of what they believed to be a fight. Uh, the run was a report of an altercation inside of the building. While en route to the location, the run was upgraded to a shooting. At this time, uh, everyone involved is accounted for, and this is very early on in the investigation, but the, this time, as I stated, it's very, everyone is accounted for, and there's uh, not believed to be any danger to the community. Shively Police is still actively investigating and say that others may have been injured during the fight, but that no one else was shot. Well, overnight, just a block away from 4th Street Live in downtown, a separate shooting. Police say one person was killed and several more were injured when a fight broke out at a restaurant there. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen has more on how business owners are now feeling after the most recent acts of gun violence in the city. Sweeping up the pieces after a tragic incident downtown. According to LMPD, five people were shot, one of them killed, around 11 Saturday night on 4th Street near West Chestnut Street. That's near the Louisville Palace in just a block from 4th Street Live. The Jefferson County coroner identified the man killed as 22-year-old DeMonte Jaquan Tyreek Marshall. Another one of the victims remains in critical condition. Yeah, it's, it's very sad, very, uh, very, very, very hard feeling to see your beautiful downtown that we've been working here the last 13, 14 years. Going through this. According to police, a group of people began fighting inside a restaurant before it spilled out onto the street, right in front of Sicilian's Pizza and Pasta. Co owner Jeff Koppel said multiple people had drawn guns and began firing. LMPD is still investigating the incident. Three people just shooting each other in very mess. Eunice has worked at and owned Safir Mediterranean Deli for more than a decade. He says over the years, being located in the heart of downtown has become more of a detriment than a blessing for his business prospects. Yeah, downtown is getting really mess. Um, we don't feel safe anymore. To hear these shootings and innocent people being hurt and they just continue. As for lifelong Louisvillian Suzanne Carrier, her dinner plans were canceled with her family from out of town when she saw Sicilians close. Nobody does, and I'm saying this, nobody does enough to make a change. Every place is gonna have some difficult times, but I'm not giving up on Louisville because of that. Declining to interview, Koppel released this statement. Due to the ongoing nature of the investigation by LMPD, we cannot release any further details at this time. Please continue to pray for the victims of this random act of violence. We appreciate your continued support for our family-owned business. The restaurant owner also extends his condolences to the victims and their families. He tells us this shop should be opened back up by tomorrow. In downtown Louisville, Connor Steff and the WHAS 11 night team on your side. Well, today we have learned that Kentucky State Representative Lamine Swan passed away. His mother confirmed the passing in a statement. Pamela Dixon says in part that she is comforted in knowing the positive impact her son had on so many, saying those include his loved ones, friends, those he advocated for throughout his life, and now those whose own life will be forever changed and strengthened by his decision to be an organ donor. Final arrangements for Representative Swan will be announced within the next few days. 
Well, former police leaders from other states are warning of what could come if Louisville isn't careful in its upcoming negotiations with the U.S. Department of Justice. Jason Johnson is the former deputy commissioner of the Baltimore Police Department and was involved in negotiating their consent decree years ago. We talked to Johnson and he says those agreements are often ineffective at fixing root issues long term. Instead, he says the result is losing more officers, hits to the local budget, and years under federal observation with no clear end. Really focus on if the concern is excessive force, really focus on that. Focus on things like training and supervision and hiring. And it's when we try to do too much at one time that you just cannot get any traction. They'll tell you that, you know, we're, it's going to be rainbows and unicorns. And for a certain point in time, it, it might be. But it's only one of the options that Louisville can, can go down. Now that's Ernest Freestone, a former New Jersey police sergeant who now lives in Louisville and shares Johnson's concern. Johnson tells us that police reforms are necessary, but in order to be effective, benchmarks need to be clear and achievable. Well, speaking of police, Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg wants to get your input on the next permanent police chief for Louisville Metro. Mayor Greenberg announced two public virtual town halls this week, and the first one is tomorrow. The mayor wants people to share what qualities and characteristics characteristics they want in LMPD's next chief. The first is tomorrow from 6 until 7 and the second one Saturday, May 20th from 3 to 4. Both meetings will be held over Zoom and you can find links to the town halls on our website whas11.com. We spent two and a half days to determine as best we can what what evidence was present in the bus about how the people came to be injured. Well, 35 years ago today, George Nichols was called to something a parent never wants to see. A drunk driver had crashed into a school bus carrying 67 people on a church trip from Kings Island back home to Radcliffe. The gas tank, then located at the front of the bus, exploded. 27 people died, three were adults, and 24 were children. Nichols, the state medical examiner at the time, found the explosion could have been prevented. Nichols spent years testifying to lawmakers in D.C. and here in Kentucky, working to make sure that students could one day walk away from a bus, bus crash. Nichols' fight and an investigation from the National Transportation Safety Board created new standards for school buses that were put into place. The, full, the fuel tank was made to be stronger and moved from the front of the bus. Stronger seats were added and more accessible emergency exits were put into place. We learned from the Carrollton bus crash has been applied and it's worked. Because of that crash and the changes that came after, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration calls the school bus the safest vehicle on the road. Well, it's Mother's Day, and we know that thousands of you make the choice to care for children without even giving birth to them. But new national and local data paints a detailed picture of the challenges facing our foster care system, as well as, as, well as how it's improved. I spoke to an expert in Louisville who says we have a long way to go. Funny how life is because I, I really did not want to do it. But Dino Shaw says fostering was the best decision he could have made at the young age of 21 years old. He's now 50. I don't do it for anything but to help, but when you hear people talk about how you helped them, it just kind of does something to you. Shaw says fostering has come with its challenges, including mentoring young people who were involved in criminal activity. Gangs, stealing cars, stuff like that. If they can come into my house and I can show them a better way to get them out of all that, that's what I'm shooting for. Most of the time, I'm having some pretty good luck. Shaw says that success comes from compassion and understanding. And new local and national data suggest more resources are needed to change the foster system as a whole. What Terry Brooks, executive director of Kentucky Youth Advocates, says he loves about this report is that it's not just a quick snapshot, but a 15-year look into the foster care system. And though there's room for improvement, he says he's optimistic. The report examines kids aged 14 to 21, or transition age youth. Brooks says this group faces unique challenges because they're aging out of the system and in need of resources to help them succeed on their own. One positive that stands out, kinship care, where a family member takes custody of children who can no longer be with their parents. We see that as a really positive 
uh, an important alternative uh, for kids. The rate of kinship care has more than doubled during this period of time. But Kentucky still falls far from the national average of kinship care, which is at 22 percent. As for improvement, Brooks says no one can look at this report and not feel a call to equity action. What we see is that kids of color experience multiple placements, two different placements, three different placements, four different placements, more than four different placements at a far higher rate than do white kids. And as foster kids transition to independent living, Brooks says there has been success, but with a third of them not leaving with stable housing, it's cause for concern. If we shortchange them now, we're going to be spending money on them, but it's going to be spending money in the justice system and the health care system. It's an investment Shaw says is worth every penny. Take a child, give them a chance, and let them see what family is. Says he's confident the problems within the foster system will be solved in Frankfurt in 2024, a budget year.